Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Timothy Adon, freelance composer and sound designer for video games, and I am back with another Wise Unreal Engine integration video. Last time, I did the simple integrate Wise into Unreal as a plugin, as well as get a few basic sounds up and running, uh, triggering in a couple different fashions in a little practice project. Today, we are playing around in a project that I've been working on on my own. And we are going to play around with RTPCs and attenuation, which is the entire reason I actually started these videos. The entire reason I actually started these videos is because of how difficult it was for me to figure that out in relation to how it works in the Unreal Engine. And there, there are lots of things describing the technical aspects, but not actually how it's... Or, loosely describing the technical uh, aspects, but not actually how it works and how uh, you should expect it to work in the engine. So today I'm going to talk about what it was that I did, including the mistakes, and what it is that I'm doing now and how it works. So since I am learning how to do both the Unreal Engine and the WISE integration middleware at the same time, there are some things that I kind of forgot about as time went on. And one of those was uh, attenuation in WISE. So at the moment, I have attenuation working properly. Uh, share sets, uh, ambient objects distance, enemy distance, and have both of those working more or less correctly in the engine right now. However, when I first started trying to get attenuation to work, I was using RTPCs instead. So before I jump in to the game to show you how it's working, I want to show you how it was I was doing it before. So in order to get the RTPCs to work, I had a get player distance and a get distance two for each robot on the screen. Um, ignore the print, st print string for now. That's important for later. And I had a set RTPC value that was set to the parameter uh, enemy distance is what I had the parameter called at the time, but I no longer have. Uh, that RTPC in there because I don't need it. And that worked for a time. However, it took me a long time to figure out why I was getting no sound originally because I wasn't getting any sound despite having the RTPC set up correctly. Um, and the reason for that was because I had no idea how distances worked. And I discovered that as I walked over robot corpses while I was shooting them, there would be a brief hint of the sound that they were making. And I realized that it, that the issue I was having of them not making noise was the fact that the parameter, which defaults at 100 for RTPCs, was way too small. And that is what prompted me to have this print string. So now, if I go, if I go into the game here and shoot at a robot, if you look up in the upper left of the game screen, you will see that it prints a distance to the robot that just died between the robot and the player. And so I used that as a way to set the maximum value of the RTPC and kind of play around with the sound from there. Unfortunately, RTPCs for distance weren't doing it for me. Uh, between the difficulty of gauging, uh, even with the printed distance values, I was having difficulty gauging how best to set RTPCs, and after a little while, they actually stopped automatically updating, no matter what I did to change them. Uh, I was having a very hard time making RTPCs work, and I feel like that that's probably going to be a discussion for another day, because I actually still have no idea what I was doing wrong, to be perfectly honest. And in researching... Uh, what was going wrong, that was when I discovered the attenuation share sets, and that's what I should have been using. So, moving on to the next bit, I now have the enemy distance attenuation. And in this, I have it set up so that the volume dips down up until around the very end where it's boosted, and I do that because I also have a low-pass filter that's going off, and if the once the low-pass filter kind of clamps down really, really high, or really, really low, rather, um, I need the boost in volume so that you can still hear it. 
And you'll notice that I currently have this set up at 13,500 as a max distance. Uh, even though the distance that I shoot at the robots are generally between 4,000 and 6,000, although it does kind of reach up to 8,000 at times. And that leads up to the next bit, which is something that I wasn't quite sure how it worked. Um, and that is the AK object in Unreal. So it's actually very nice. Uh, you get this cool little preview bubble of how far away you will hear the sound from the object. And that is super, super dandy. But it doesn't quite explain what the attenuation scaling factor here is. And I was super confused about the combination of this plus the max value of attenuation in Wise. And it took me a little bit of experimentation to real and a second uh, attenuation object in a, uh, a static world object that you'll see in a second or hear in a second, one or the other, that this is a multiplier. And that might seem obvious to some people, but to me it wasn't. So that is an important thing to realize. So I'm actually going to fix that right now. Or at least hope I'm fixing it. I'm going to compile. And we'll take this enemy distance and make it, I don't know, 9,000. Does that sound good? It's at 13,500. So if it doesn't work, I'll fix it later. And then save. When you save and go back into Unreal, hey, look, it fixed it. Automatically updated the, the distance bubble. And that is a very important thing to note, is that as long as you have your attenuation set up in Wise and your AK object attached to your game object, then any updates you make to attenuation will also automatically update this bubble once you save. And that is super freaking cool and handy and good to know. And that took me a little while to find. So I have that set up. Let's just do a quick little play in here. See what that sounds like. Oh. And there's the, uh, the static world object I was talking about. Which I have set up to really only make sound near the platform that it spawns on. So for this to work, attenuation is actually really easy once you have it set up. Um, I have this, the, uh, the get distance to player character, only set up so that I can test things out in the game because it'll print the string, I can see it, and I can uh, change my attenuation settings from there. Uh, aside from that, once the event, it, all you have to do is call the event, robot death, self is the actor, and the robot gets destroyed right after it makes that sound. Uh, once you do that, it is all set. The attenuation will just work. And that is super cool and very handy dandy. So moving on from that attenuation, I'm just going to show one last bit. And that is uh, the energy source sound that I have there. I have this to be like procedurally generated. Each one of these nodes will randomly spawn a floor of which I've got three at the moment. And so I have inside of this cylinder, I have an AK object that is the energy source start, which is just a looping object that also, and this is where I discovered what the attenuation scaling factor is for and the uh, attenuation radius bubble that you get right there. And that is where I set up the, atten the attenuation distance for this using the floor as a kind of a measure for the max distance on my attenuation. And that was what got me to figure out how to fix it for the robots. I purposely left the robots unfixed for this video. And now they are fixed. So RTPCs work in very much a similar fashion. However, there is no bubble for them because they're not really supposed to be there for distance. They are supposed to be there for other game parameters. And for those of you that don't necessarily know, uh, RTPC stands for Real-Time Parameter Control. It is a control controlled in real time by parameters in the Unreal Engine, or whatever engine you happen to be using. 
So the only one that I have here is low health, which is controlling this entire audio bus right here, which is world objects. And it's just a low pass filter. So if your health, uh, your health starts at 100, once you hit 50, all the damage you take will apply a low pass filter to all of the world sounds in the game. And in order to set that up, I have the base character. That is a blueprint. And I actually had to do a couple things here. So let's ignore that for the moment. We're actually going to do... Uh, look, uh, we're going to look at this. Whenever you take damage, it's going to set your health. It's going to calculate if you're dead. And then if you're not dead, it's going to set the new RTPC value based on what your new health value is. That's it. So just to review, damage, set your health using your current health minus the damage you've taken, which is also printed to string. So whenever you take, when I, so that I have a kind of a debugger. So whenever I take damage, it's going to show up on my screen. It'll calculate if you're dead, which basically just means if you're at zero, you're dead. That's it. And then if it's true, all of your inputs get disabled. Cool. If it's false, then it sets the RTPC value. Easy. Now, I want you to know I say easy, uh, and I've probably said easy a couple times or something similar to it, but this actually took me a very long time to figure out. Uh, so really, when I say easy, I mean that once you know it, it's like, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, that's really, really simple. But man, finding it out was such a pain. And so I don't want to uh, make it sound like it's something that everybody should just know offhand. It really, it really isn't. It takes, it take, it took a long time for me to figure this out. So don't worry. If it takes a long time for you, trust me, you're not the only one. And I will show this off right now. It's going to take one moment while I, uh, while I find death. And I died. So the, uh, the second part of this whole thing was that once you set the RTPC value, it doesn't automatically reset when you restart the game, which I find a little silly, but whatever. So over here, when I have the, the game start and the, it spawns the blaster and attaches it to the game player, I also have it so that it sets the RTPC value equal to whatever your starting health is at. That's it. Very simple. But it's also very necessary because... Uh, Unreal won't automatically set it up. And just in case you need to see that in action, I'm going to just quickly break this link so that it's not setting the RTPC. Jump into the game. And look at that. Low pass filter still applied. So go back in. Throw that back in there. Compile. Yeah, there we go. All set. Make sure that you start the game setting your RTPC values the way that they're supposed to be set. That's all I've got for this video. Uh, I just wanted to show off attenuations and RTPCs. And once I run into another non-obvious thing, because I'm still putting this game together, so I will figure it out and I will put together a video for it. I think the next thing I'm going to try to do are uh, footsteps attached to animations if I can figure out how that works because I do in fact have feet and a gun that's just stuck to my hip infinitely um, so I'm going to do footsteps and I'm probably going to create a couple more floors that have different ground textures so that I can try to test uh, footsteps and switches for said footsteps and that'll be the next thing. I imagine I'm going to run into some weird issue there. So I will in inevitably create a video for it. Until then, I hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Oh, don't forget, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything you want to say, feel free to comment or send me a message or what have you. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.